In the first year since Colorado's Violence Protection Act was enacted, fewer than 125 red flag petitions were filed. The vast majority of those came from law enforcement agencies filed against people threatening suicide, violence against a partner, or mass shootings. The red flag law is working as we envisioned it. It is a tool that primarily is being used by law enforcement to save lives. Attorney General Phil Weiser's office released a report Wednesday about the law that allows a court to temporarily restrict people's access to a firearm if they pose a threat to themselves or others. We want this to be a system that protects people who are really in trouble. Law enforcement as well as household or family members can file a red flag petition. From there, a judge can issue an order or deny it based on lack of credible evidence. 85% of petitions filed by law enforcement seeking a year-long extreme risk protection order were granted. Compare that to petitions filed by family members or roommates where only 15% were granted. That is a clear evidence that the court looked at the affidavit and felt that there was insufficient evidence. Douglas County Sheriff Tony Spurlock is a proponent of the law, which was established after one of his deputies was shot and killed by a man experiencing a mental health crisis. He says his office has filed four red flag petitions. Those four cases worked appropriately because those individuals are still alive today. There have been four confirmed instances of abuse of red flag procedures. In one of those cases, a woman was charged with perjury. Susan Holmes filed a red flag petition against a CSU police officer who fatally shot her son. A mistrial was declared in her perjury case last week. In Denver, I'm Mark Salinger, 9 News.